Welcome back, guys. So in this lesson, I'm going to talk about SQL triggers, right, with overview and give you some practical examples. So SQL triggers are a powerful feature in relational database systems because they automatically execute predefined actions while specific events occur in the database, such as, for example, insert, update, or delete statements. So in this video, I'm going to talk about deep dive into what SQL triggers are, their types, their syntax, practical use cases, and examples as well. We'll also see how they can automate tasks, maintain data integrity, and of course, enforce business rules. So let's dive right in. SQL triggers are special types of stored procedures that are invoked automatically in response to specific events on a particular table or view. Now they can help enforce business logic, validate data and audit changes without needing explicit intervention by users or applications. So it's a great way to automate things because triggers can be set to activate either before or after an event, ensuring actions that are taken as needed during data manipulations. So the common events, for example, that activate triggers are statements like insert, update, or delete, right? Because they, once again, they help maintain data integrity by enforcing your logic that you've actually created. Triggers can also help ensure data integrity, like I mentioned earlier, and consistency across a database. They can enforce business rules directly in the database layer. With that, it's basically reducing the need for application side checks. So triggers automate repetitive tasks like, like logging changes, for example, or performing calculations, which saves time and prevents human error. Now using triggers can help enhance security also by monitoring and logging critical operations such as changes to sensitive data. For example, the basic syntax that you see here is creating a trigger, right? The statement is create trigger, then you give it a trigger name, and then of course the trigger event that you want to use like before, after, insert, update, delete, and then simply on a specific table name or a table view. For each row, you can also begin statements and use the end, right? So that's the basic, basic SQL trigger syntax. So once again, the syntax of the trigger includes several parts. And let me explain all these in detail, right? So for example, defining the trigger name, specifying the timing, which is before or after, the event itself, which is insert, update, or delete, and the target table. So for each row affected by the event, the trigger executes the SQL statements defined in the block. So for example, this slide that you see shows a general structure for creating SQL triggers, which works in most relational databases like, of course, MySQL 8, or if you're using PostgreSQL or Oracle as well, it'll work in those scenarios as well. So let's consider an example. Let me give you some in-depth example as well. So for example, we want to log changes in an employees table whenever data is updated. So the trigger fires after an update event and inserts the old values of the updated row into an employees underscore log table. So this approach allows us to track historical changes for audit purposes, ensuring we have a record of past data. So as you can see, we simply create a trigger and we call it log underscore changes, and it's gonna update or after update on employees table for each row begin. And then it's gonna insert the values within that table itself. Next is operations with SQL triggers. What can we actually do, right? So the different types of SQL triggers, primarily categorized based on the event they respond to and when they're activated. For example, DML, which is data manipulation language, triggers include before and after triggers, right? That respond to data changes, like insert, update, or delete. Now DDL, on the other hand, which is data definition language, these triggers respond to schema changes like create, alter, and drop operations. So log on triggers, for example, is another way we're commonly used in SQL Server, execute in response to a user log on events and are useful for session monitoring. So different types of triggers you can actually use, which are very, very powerful as they help you automate your regular tasks. All right, how do we modify and delete triggers? It's simple, creating a trigger involves 
specifying its timing, event type, and the actions to perform, right? In this example that you see, we create a trigger that logs the deletion of records in the employees table by inserting the old record into an employees underscore log table, right? So this helps us maintain an audit trail of deleted records for future reference, which is a great way because as you add more employees and you delete records, for example, you need to be able to have a detailed log, right? So this will help you create that as well. Next is how we display existing triggers. If you wanna see how many triggers you've created, for example, to modify an existing trigger, you must first drop it and then create a new one with the necessary changes. So SQL also provides commands for deleting a trigger when it's no longer needed. So for example, here you can see how to delete a trigger and recreate it with different actions, showcasing the flexibility of triggers in maintaining database logic. So for example, to view the existing triggers, you use the commands such as show triggers, and that will list all the triggers that you already have. And it's gonna list the triggers in the current database, including details like name, event, and then timing as well. So most database systems allow you to view existing triggers using commands like show triggers, like I mentioned earlier, which is in MySQL, or querying metadata tables. Now this is useful for auditing and managing the triggers in a database, especially in complex environments with many triggers in use. So once again, we simply create a trigger and then we give the values as well, depending on which record are we updating, inserting, or deleting. Triggers are also commonly used to automate updates across related tables. So for example, when a new table is inserted into the orders table, or for example, when a new order rather is inserted into the orders table, a trigger can automatically update the customer's last order date in the customer's table. This ensures consistency across related tables without needing manual updates. So here in this example, it automatically updates a related table. For example, you create a trigger called the after order insert, right? That's the name of the trigger. And after insert an orders for each row, and then it begins, right? What does it do? It simply updates the customer set from the last order to the recent now, where ID is of course the new customer ID. So this is a great example that you can actually take a look at where it automatically is updating a related table. So why do we use triggers, right? What are some of the advantages, for example? So in triggers, you often need to access the data before and after an event. So SQL provides the old and new variables for this purpose. The old variable contains the data before the event, while new contains the updated data. Now this allows for complex logic and triggers, such as comparing all the new values or creating detailed logs of changes. So this ensures not only data consistency, integrity, it automates repetitive tasks, for example, enforces business rules, and helps maintain an audit trail for data changes. So these are some real great benefits by using triggers. All right, so finally, in summary, SQL triggers are a powerful tool in any database administrator's toolkit, by the way, right? So this allows for automation of tasks, like I mentioned earlier, ensuring data integrity, business logic at the database level. So by understanding the different types of triggers and how to create, modify, and use them effectively, you can enhance the efficiency and reliability of your database applications. Consider using triggers wisely to prevent performance issues, by the way, keep that in mind, due to excessive or complex trigger logic. So I hope this helps. Let me know if you have any questions with this. Let's move to the next lesson.